Educational Psychology, Human Growth and Development, Cognitive Development in Adolescence. I would there were no age between 16 and 3 and 20, or that youth would sleep out the rest, for there is nothing in the between but getting wenches with child, wronging the ancientry, stealing, fighting. Hark you now. Even in Shakespeare's time, teenagers were thought to be moody, overly dramatic, impulsive, withdrawn, idealistic, contrary, and out of control. Traditional views of adolescence indicate this period to be a time of turmoil characterized by extreme mood swings. Some proponents of this view have said that this is so much a part of development that failure to exhibit such turmoil is a sign of arrested development. Now, however, researchers are less likely to emphasize storm and stress as a biologically programmed characteristic of adolescent development, but do recognize that people experience increased levels of emotion and conflict in this stage of life. Many of these adolescent behaviors can be explained by understanding how brain maturation develops. By age six, a child's brain has grown to 95% of its adult size. But even though this structural foundation is in place, the business of connecting, coordinating, and integrating all of its components continues in a process that takes over 20 years. Cognitive function in the brain develops from the bottom up and inside out. So it is first apparent in the cerebellum, which is responsible for sustaining life physiological maintenance, and movement. Next, the limbic centers, which control emotion, become connected and by late adolescence are fully functioning. Also beginning in adolescence, the executive centers of the frontal cortex are being connected and continue this process into the late 20s. The anterior insula area in the brain reaches its peak in adolescence. This area of the limbic cortex is highly sensitive to reward and combined with the underdevelopment of the frontal lobes results in teens behaving more emotionally and indulging in more pleasure-seeking or risk-taking behaviors. Rather than feeling invulnerable, they are simply making decisions without the mediating effects of the frontal cortex. Daredevil activities might include unregulated experimentation with drugs, alcohol, unsafe sex, and extreme out-of-control activities. The possibility of crashing into a concrete curb without a helmet is not even considered. Jean Piaget's theory about how children think, reason, and solve problems begins at birth with the sensory motor stage, moves through the pre-operational and concrete operation stages, and finally reaches the formal operation stage at or around puberty. It should be noted that even though the first sparks of this new scientific way of thinking may be seen at 11 or 12, it tends to be very hit and miss, and complete activation takes many years to accomplish. Early teens are still thinking primarily in concrete modalities. They are proficient at forming general conclusions logically based on accumulated facts and personal experience through inductive reasoning, but have difficulty starting with the hypothetical principles and drawing specific conclusions with deductive reasoning. When posed with a hypothetical premise like, what if a particular religion refused to allow low-income people to become priests, Concrete thinking sixth graders would reject it as impossible, but 11th graders would relish the idea as an intriguing exercise. Also, this formal operations way of thinking seems to be observed only in scientifically oriented Western cultures. And furthermore, some in these Western cultures never arrive at formal operational thought. This might suggest that even though the potential for this way of thinking exists, it must be of value to the society to be useful. And even then, it must be trained and exercised in order to emerge. 
Lawrence Kohlberg viewed moral development as the ability to make moral judgments about right and wrong actions in particular situations. As children pass through stages of cognitive growth, they will respond to questions of right and wrong behavior in qualitatively more sophisticated ways. At the first level of moral development, young children operate out of an egocentric form of reasoning dominated by personal rewards for being good and punishments for being bad. They have not begun to include any societal conventions of right and wrong. As individuals enter adolescence, brain development begins to provide the capacity for more abstract thought. They gain the ability to regulate behavior and guide their actions based on a moral code. They consider the feelings of others and they become sensitive to the beliefs and philosophies of their society. In adolescence, teens are transitioning into a more social form of moral reasoning, which is linked to Piaget's formal operational stage of cognitive development. In Kohlberg's conventional level of morality, individuals adhere, sometimes rigidly, to social laws and conventions even if there is no consequence for disobedience. Laws that have been codified by accepted authorities into central ideals are perceived as abstract truths and obedience is therefore required in order to maintain a functioning society. Kohlberg believed that most individuals remained at the conventional level where morality is dictated by outside forces and never fully proceed to the post-conventional level of moral development. The controversial experiments of Stanley Milgram on compliance to authority seem to indicate that, at least under some conditions, people will operate within the conventional mode of morality, even though it may come in conflict with more abstract, post-conventional views of justice and basic human rights. We have seen how development of the brain moves from the bottom up and inside out, and how this progression leads to predictable behaviors and ways of thinking. Teenagers are thinking in progressively logical protocols and behaving in ways that indicate an awareness of societal codes of ethics and morals. We have also seen how these new forms of cognition emerge progressively over time and can manifest in emotionally charged and sometimes risky ways. This is a high energy time of life that is exciting and exuberant, if often quite stressful for parents and teachers.